One thing I've noticed being active outside in the cold weather that is Vermont is that I find wool insulates me much better than synthetic. And I'm not talking about like total insulation because you can just add more layers um, of synthetic or wool or I'm not considering that because I wear the layers that I feel work. It just, I feel that wool, um, I don't overheat it as much. So thus it's better insulation because I get less sweaty. Um, and so then I don't get as cold if I'm wearing wool, if I like stop moving and the sweat cools down, which is a really big problem. Whereas synthetic, I feel like I get a lot sweatier, like this sweater. So um, this is an experiment I've designed where I have outside on my deck, um, I have a glass jar, canning jar, um, which I have filled with hot water. Um, with a thermometer inside that and another one out in the air to get a temperature difference and I'm recording that with a time-lapse camera to um, and then I'll go through that and check the temperature at different times to get the data about the cooling off of this um, water and I'm going to compare the difference that between like a wool sweater, um, this synthetic um, sweater I'll do a control without anything on it, and a variety of other options. I definitely want to test cotton as well. Um, just to see if this theory that I have that wool um, is better at, at keeping you, has this, well, what my theory is is that because wool is a natural material and is from animals, um, and or sheep in the case that they are, um, those sheep don't want to overheat either. So it makes sense that somehow evolutionary advantage that if the sheep gets hot, the wool lets out more heat. So what I'm going to test is that I'm going to compare like high temperatures to lower temperatures and see if the relative rate of cooling compared to the temperature difference um, between those, there's any difference between that. Not mentioned in the intro was a secondary hypothesis. I find that more processed wool, like a shirt or socks, does not have the same difference in letting heat through at different temperatures than less processed wool such as the sweater. I am less certain of this hypothesis partly because products produced from that processed wool are thinner, so it may just not have enough thickness for me to notice. It took me over two and a half years to start processing the data from those time-lapse videos, but now that I have the final data, the results are promising. More details on how I processed the data and why I used the methods I did is located in the link document, as well as a lot more information about this experiment, including the emotional significance to me. Over the month of experimentation, I collected 20 usable experiment runs in the categories no insulation, mostly cotton sock, mostly wool sock, synthetic sweater, and wool sweater. In order to get the data out of the time lapse, I went through it and recorded the time that the water temperature passed through each 5 degree Fahrenheit mark in the outdoor air temperature at that time. I chose to use the Fahrenheit setting hoping for more precision. That, however, backfired as I am fairly sure these cheap hardware store thermometers measure in Celsius to one figure past the decimal point and convert to Fahrenheit thus slightly muddling my numbers. Additionally, the thermometers only update every 30 seconds, so at higher temperatures when the water temperature is dropping fast, it only approximates the time the temperature passed the precise degree I was aiming for. Once I had the length of time it took the water to cool through each 5 degree increment, I multiplied that time by the difference between the water and outside air temperatures in order to adjust for the rate that I expect the water to lose heat across the range of air to water temperature differences. Graphing that result is clearly chaotic, but there are potentially some trends. The higher the value for temperature difference between the water in the container and the outside air temperature multiplied by cooling time on the y-axis, the more effective the insulation. You can see how all the materials have higher insulation ability than the control, in green, which was bare glass. Given that I have already adjusted these values by temperature difference, I was expecting the control to be flat across, with a result confirming my hypothesis having a negatively trending slope. It is important to note that I've reversed the x-axis so the higher water temperatures are on the left, thus a negatively trending slope will have higher values on the right of this graph. However, all of the experimental runs have a negatively trending slope, even the control. 
I don't have the knowledge to speculate on why that would be. The back and forth variation at consistent temperatures seen in some of these runs, I believe indicates issues with the thermometers. However, I'm surprised that these show up at lower temperatures rather than higher temperatures where I'd expect there potentially being more issues like this given the previously discussed limitations with the thermometers at higher temperatures where it's cool and faster. Adding trend lines by material more clearly shows the differences. The slope of the synthetic sweater and socks are all similar to each other and more negative than the control. The wool sweater has a considerably more negative slope than any of the materials, which indicates that its insulation properties change much more depending on temperature, with it having better insulation when the water temperature is cooler compared to when the water temperature is warmer. All the materials demonstrate this same pattern, though not as strongly as the wool sweater. These trend lines are over the full range of water temperature data, which is more of a range than would be possible for body temperature. My assumption in designing the experiment this way was that the patterns would continue to occur outside those ranges in a linear fashion, and I chose to examine it at the farther range to get a picture with my imprecise thermometers, though I can't think of an evolutionary reason why this property would need to extend beyond the range of body temperature. Even though the results I see indicate confirmation of both my hypotheses, this is not definitive. In addition to the issues previously outlined, particularly issues with the thermometer, there are only three runs for a couple of the materials, which is a particular problem given the issues with the outside environment this was conducted in. Though I tried to run the experiments at times when there was little to no wind and sun was not shining on the experiment area, and I did remove data from times when I believe it to be sun influenced, there is a lot of variation in the natural environment that was not controlled for. Though I did adjust for temperature difference between water and air temperature, it does not seem unlikely that the air temperature itself could have an effect. But I do not have enough data for me to feel that any results from analyzing by air temperature would be defensible. One other potential variable is considering the weave of the material. Particularly important considering that even my less processed wool, the knit sweater, is considerably different than what is found on a sheet. I would like to conduct this experiment again with better thermometers, more controlled environments, a few different setups, and more runs. There's also a lot more that makes wool a good choice as clothing that I could test in the future with a good setup.